Hey guys, SCS here. Today we're gonna to be diving into the Kava ecosystem. I think this one's extremely under the radar. We'll talk a little bit about why I think there's some upcoming catalysts that will really change that. So we'll dive a little bit into the blockchain itself, talk about a few of the alts that I really like on chain, but hopefully you guys learn something new. Diving right in, what is Kava? So Kava is a blockchain that really looks to connect uh, the Cosmos IBC ecosystem with EVM chains like Ethereum. Um, so this is something that I feel like has been tried with a lot of bridges. It's failed most of the times it has been tried, but Kava has been around an extremely long time and they've already sort of done it. Um, so as that grows, you're kind of pulling T TVL from both sides um, and it makes it uh, set up to be extremely successful from um, pulling a liquidity in standpoint. So really like what they're building and uh, if they can pull it off and get the adoption that's needed, um, I think there's a good chance that they end up being super successful. Diving into like Catalyst, um, I think one of the biggest things, just over a year old, where they announced a 750 million developer incentive program. The 750 million was based off of the Kava price at the time. I believe it's about 200 million Kava is what they actually decided that they were going to be paying out as part of this program. Um, over the course of four years. So 200 million Kava over four years going to developers, staking rewards, and really just bootstrapping builders as well as liquidity on chain. Um, since then, like uh, obviously the price of Kava has come down. I, I believe it's about, uh, about 170 million worth of incentives as of right now. But as the chain grows, like that price of Kava could go back up. That value fluctuates quite a lot. Um, when you see like protocols like Arbitrum and Optimism do airdrops in their own token um, that isn't a gas token or doesn't have as much to do with the actual um, protocol itself, there's a reason for that. Like when there's actual incentive programs done similar to this one, it's almost a little bit counterproductive because it, it makes Kava have decently heavy emissions, kind of like everybody on chains being diluted as they pay out those rewards. And that's why people or like chains like Optimism or Arbitrum, like they do their airdrops in a separate token than their gas token, um, because it doesn't really pull some of the projects and liquidity down with it as they emit their token to pay out these builders or pay out these rewards. So as Kava grows over these four years, this could end up being a very big incentive program worth mentioning quickly. They're incentivizing both across ETH and Cosmos ecosystems, so they can pull projects from both sides. Pretty exciting stuff. When you're looking at Kava as a whole, probably surprise a lot of people that it's the number 12 blockchain by TVL. Um, so it's been flying up the ranks, as you can see in, in the last month, it's TVL has gone up 28%, which is pretty impressive. One of the quickest growing blockchains from a TVL perspective, which is extremely important in my eyes. And on top of that, they also have like 90 projects that they've announced that are building on top of Kava. Beefy, Sushi, Curve, At Cash, which is like a really like Amazon or AWS competitor. And then they have a lot of these chains, like different networks that they partner with and like are building on top or connecting into their network. Important in my eyes. So like they, they really are becoming um, almost like a, a centerpiece to a lot of these networks, which is pretty impressive. This ecosystem is growing quickly and they already have some of the staples of DeFi and they're building out some of the other pieces. So like that's one of, I would say, the reasons I'm bullish on Kava itself. Um, if you take a look at the chart, as I mentioned, it's been around a long time. This is back to 2020. It did a massive run up to like nine plus dollars and that's entirely retraced. I mean, we've pretty much swept the lows. We definitely hit some oversold territory. So as a whole, I feel like it's not a bad time. But let's look into some alts. That's where a lot of the money's made, at least in my opinion. So diving into some of the stuff that's being built on Kava. What would a new ecosystem be without a solidly fork? I feel like there's two or three new ones that pop up almost daily at this point. If you look, there's about 725 million in solidly forks across chain. But surprisingly, the sixth largest solidly fork is actually on Kava. So um, behind some of these bigger names, uh, Equalizer, Solidly itself, Thena, Velodrome, all very big, but Kava is actually number six. So it's a pretty cool project. They do some awesome stuff on here though. Pretty impressed with their cross chain platform. They use similar to Vela, they use Squid and Axelar um, as a plugin where you can almost deposit from any chain, swap it, and then bring it into Kava in like the asset of your choice. 
So it makes it extremely accessible from a lot of places. It's not even just ETH. And they have multi-chain as a bridge. So I think that like building this isn't super easy. And like shout out to Squid and Axelar. Like this is one of the coolest tools that I've seen, what they've done across a few different platforms. So honestly, awesome stuff. I used the cross-chain piece and it was extremely nice to use. When taking a deeper look at um, their actual TVL, what I didn't mention is like those 750 million in incentives for the Kava network, how they pay them out to projects are based off of TVL. Like the larger share of TVL you have on chain, the more actual earnings you get of those Kava rewards. So having a big TVL is extremely important. It's one of the reasons I love Vara. Like I think they have the opportunity um, to be the centerpiece of the entire ecosystem. So pretty bullish on just like what they're building from that standpoint and all of the incentives. So the other thing that I think a lot of people discount is the fact that with those on-chain incentives that Kava being paid out to these projects based off of TVL, it allows these projects to bribe, which is perfect for a solidly model um, because they have extra cash, more runway. Like they're able to use a lot of the income that they have um, to pay out bribes. And a lot of that gets funneled back to Vara here. So like they're pulling a decent TVL and pretty amazing APRs. Like if you're looking at uh, BNB Vara, 380%, like Terrett, 429%. Vara ETH is paying 300%. So pretty, pretty nice APRs and it's like solidly. So there's not a ton of dilution. If you know like how to play it, make sure you do some of your own research there if you're looking into it. Um, but it allows for money to funnel back in to the ecosystem with some of those rewards. They have a very similar setup, kind of went nuts um, when it was released uh, what, about a month ago, just over a month ago. Um, and it's since cooled off entirely. Uh, but like those, from my understanding is those rewards for Kava haven't really, uh, haven't started to be paid out to these protocols and April 12th is going to be the first day that they'll be paid out. So in about a week, which I think will help bootstrap this entire ecosystem, um, which is extremely exciting. Looking at the FDV of this, it's 8.7 million. So that's locked and unlocked tokens. That's extremely small. Um, at least in my opinion, that's extremely small. When you look into some of the competition, Velo's a great example of this, like FDV of locked plus unlocked is 126 million. Most of that's probably locked, uh, if, as you can see with the market cap being 29 million. If you look at other competitors like Thena, Thena has gotten crushed lately because of all the BNB FUD, uh, but we'll give it a look um, as far as like what they have. Their FDV is 26.9 million, uh, but their market cap circulating is tiny. So I think there's a ton of upside here, especially with the on-chain incentives. If you go back and actually look at like what Velo did, Velo also had the OP airdrop, which helped bootstrap this entire ecosystem. They became the main chain that everybody started building on top of. And I mean, if you look at how much you've earned from staking VE Velo, I mean, this went from what, half a cent to, what are we at now, 13? So you've probably done what? 27x to highs you did 50x well printing bribes which is nuts i mean of course you're not staying extremely liquid because you have to walk for four years but i mean still like this is a pretty wild run up that doesn't necessarily mean that kava is going to perform just like velo um, but i will say there are a lot of ties between the kava vara team um, and optimism so if you listen to some of the amas um, i popped into a few haven't listened to them all they've almost are a friendly fork of Velo. Um, they've gotten to know the team. They work with them decently often, really work together. I wouldn't say that they're the same dev teams. I don't think that's the case, but uh, they have help and are working directly with the Velo team. A ton of reasons to be bullish on this. The other thing that I'll touch on is rewards. Um, a lot of these solidly forks, they don't, have, they don't have great APRs from bribes, which really hasn't been the case here. If you look at the APRs from uh, like what you're being paid out on Vivara, some of these are over 100%, and these are being paid in like Kava, BNB, ETH, USDC, Vara. Um, like some of these are pretty legit tokens that you're earning. So if you can stake now and these bribes keep growing with the ecosystem, there's a lot of money to be made, and you can probably cover your initial like locking just with a lot of the bribes that are coming. And once again, a lot of these bribes are really before a lot of the like heavy Kava incentives are being paid out. So something to consider. Um, and also like a lot of these protocols like are probably gonna be paying out those incentives to lockers. So um, we'll dive a little bit deeper into that. But 
pretty cool project. I really like it. I think this is a building block of the entire chain. Um, I think the team has been very good from what I've seen. I think they're well connected, set up to be extremely successful. So the market cap's about 8.7 million. But if you look into like the actual wars of where is a lot of that market cap sitting. If you look at the top holders, 18% of that is sitting in VE Vara in the uh, Vara treasury. Huge chunk of that's sitting at Kava Labs. Liquid Driver from FTM. You also have like QI Dow's a big holder. Beefy's a big holder. These are big projects that own a big share. So like, I don't think there's much selling pressure coming from these. Like when I look at a project like Mare, which we're going to go through next, um, owning 4.52% of what could be the main decks on Kava sets them up extremely well to like continue to grow, always have liquidity for their project um, and makes them extremely dangerous like from a, a growth perspective. So really like to see this and this should be almost like a cheat sheet looking through Kava of what projects are, have influence um, because they have such a big stake in the main decks. Diving into Mare. Mare's a lending and borrowing market. So you can think of Aave, Compound. Um, it has a pretty massive TVL already. Um, total supply about 180 million. Total borrow about 150 million. Um, this is by the same devs that did Sawn Finance on Optimism. I, I think that's extremely important to mention because there's been so many exploits on lending and borrowing protocols lately. But these devs aren't it isn't their first time building it. And they're also building code um, and have another project helping support the dev team. So I find all for all of those reasons, it makes me extremely bullish. But the fact that these guys are building almost entirely on top of Vara says a lot. So I almost look at these two projects as working directly with the Optimism team. So like Sone and Velodrome are working directly with Mar and Vara. I read this as this is Optimism's way of plugging into the IBC and pulling in a lot of liquidity um, that maybe their competition like Arbitrum is not going to have access to right out of the gate. I think it's a very smart play. I think instead of betting on Optimism for that reason, it's better to play these Kava plays and think maybe they're going to pull some of the TVL in from Optimism. Um, and they also have these big projects backing them. So extremely bullish for that reason. Like if you look at this chart, I mean, this thing was brutalized, like one cent at the low. At the highs, it went up to 45. So it did a 45X, but these devs have done this before. I mean, that was from October till April um, and they know what they're building. Um, if you look at the, the Mar chart, very, I want to say somewhat similar, like it had a pump, got pretty brutalized. Can we head back down to these lows? Definitely. Will we? Uh, I'm not so sure. I think we might have some more legs in us before we go down there, but um, we'll see how it plays out. Like there's only 1.1 million of liquidity right now. Um, I think that'll only grow. They have so much influence within Vara. Like, as I mentioned, they own over 4% of all locked Vara. So they have liquidity for pretty much ever, um, just based off of that, as long as Vara is successful. Um, but picture this doing something similar to what Sone did, and uh, it's being worked by similar dev teams. I mean, it has a lot of upside um, from my perspective. But looking at this, uh, back to the conversation around TVL and risk, these are pretty basic assets. I don't see a ton of risk in here right now, especially with the dev team having that kind of experience. It's really only stables in Kava. So feel pretty good about it. It's getting a ton of usage. Back to the TVL conversation of the projects with the highest TVL on Kava are the ones that get the largest percent of airdrop. When they loop through like this, they actually get a larger portion of Kava airdrop to them. So with an airdrop coming on the 12th, they're getting 227 Kava for the month. Um, this is directly from the dev team and their announcement channel. 227,000 Kava is at like 85 cents. That's like 200K that they're earning monthly just from like the airdrops of the Kava Rise program. So then you look at like this as a project, their market cap's only 2.9 million. If they continue at that rate, they're gonna earn an airdrop the entire market cap worth of Kava back to the stakers of Mare. So this is a lending and borrowing protocol. It's very hard to beat the TVL of some of these projects. So I think those airdrops will stay pretty hefty, even if they lose like a smaller percent um, or like their percentage, like as more and more projects launch um, on chain, like if they're getting a smaller percentage of those monthly, like it's still a massive amount. So um, I'm pretty bullish for that reason. It is a 2.9 million market cap on a 28.6 million FDV. There is a lot of dilution that's gonna be happening. 
Um, just looking through what some of that distribution looks like, like they have a pretty healthy um, distribution. Like most of it's going to the community or or stakers of like their optimism project. So heavily distributed, which you love to see. When you look at the emissions a month, I believe there's about 11 million circulating right now. So having 5 million of emissions per month is pretty hefty. Um, but like you earn it back because of that Kava airdrop and because of some of the protocol earnings. So um, just taking a look at that like staking program. So they have SMAR and UMAR. These are pretty much the same product. One that you pays you in VARA, over 200% APR in VARA. So you're earning protocol owned liquidity and like that huge chunk of VARA, VE VARA that they own. They're paying that all out to all their SMAR stakers. Um, and you're earning more and more to help with that actual dilution. It doesn't entirely cover it, but it helps a lot. Um, and this 312% doesn't include that Kava airdrop, um, which I mean, honestly, this APR is probably closer to 700%. Uh, the only difference between these two is they have two products. So one will pay you in their token, MAR. The other will pay you in USDC. Instead of having them pay out MAR and then users dump it if they don't want to hold it, they'll just pay them out directly in USDC, which is pretty nice. So uh, these APRs are pretty insane when you also add in the Kava airdrop and do some of the math on it. Um, so pretty impressive stuff, if not like more than covers the dilution, uh, but people just haven't been really doing a lot of that math. Every day as it gets more diluted, this becomes more and more attractive, especially with some of the airdrops that they're going to be receiving. Rewards are distributed weekly. So VARA on Wednesdays, uh, Mayor on USDC on Thursdays. So it only pays out once a week. It's not rolling rewards, which I don't love. When you stake, it has a seven-day unlock. And they do that so people don't like just stake for like before the reward days and then unstake. So it makes you stake for a week. But that keeps a lot of rewards out of circulation, um, it makes people stake for longer periods, especially ones who are compounding. Like if you stake, you get your rewards and then you restake those. Like it, I believe it restarts your timer. So it keeps, a, it's all like a pretty good locking mechanism, but this gives you a ton of exposure to Kava's ecosystem as a whole. Cause you're earning VARA. They have a massive VARA position, which uh, they, it gives more massive utility. Like if you look through the liquidity, one of the deepest liquidity pools and highest earning is, is MAR USDC because they own 4% of the supply of VE VARA. This gives MAR utility for a long time. It gives it, makes sure it has extremely deep liquidity. Um, and also like this is constantly earning VARA, which they're paying out to stakers. So um, it's a very nice flywheel that they build on top of it. And that's one of the reasons I feel like the teams are working together. This to me is a way that you can get a very high earning position that gives you a leverage spot within the Kava ecosystem that you're not required to lock for four years like Vara. So if you're looking for like, hey, I don't want to lock for four years. I hear that all the time when it comes to solidly forks. Like this gives you a position where you can stake week to week, earn extremely high APRs with this plus the airdrop. And then you're also not required to lock for more than seven days. So really like this as a position. Pretty impressive that like technically by TVL standpoint, it's 183 million in the top 11 lending markets. Um, a lot of that is because it's just looped so heavily. It's catching on extremely quickly. Like from a one month chain standpoint, great growth, especially in the last like seven days. And this is only going to skyrocket, I think, as those rewards kick off. If I was making a bet, I would think that there's going to be a big influx of stakers um, right before that April 11th date. Um, so before next Wednesday, when these rewards are paid out, um, I feel like there's probably going to be a lot of people that come in, stake um, SMAR, um, and like try and get their Kava airdrop, both of these rewards. And like that'll also take a lot of supply out of circulation. So um, that's kind of where I'm placing my bets. I really like this as a setup, and I really like this as a project, and one of the ones that I'm most bullish on within the ecosystem. A few other small things I wanted to touch on and just like highlight. Um, acryptos.com and this is a project I wasn't familiar with, uh, but they've really been blowing up. So they're on a bunch of chains. Uh, as you can see here, Kava is now their like number one chain, but they're actually building a yield, ag they've built a yield aggregator on top of Mar, on top of Vara. So looking through the vaults on, on Kava, um, they have these Mar vaults, which is just pretty much the borrowing and lending markets. These are paying out 30 plus percent on stables. Um, I believe this auto compounds as well. Um, which is very nice, like 28%, 32% on stables, which is nuts. Um, some of these are just absurd, um, especially on some of these that I'm bullish on. Like, I mean, 
246% APR, over 1K APY. When you look at the VARA chart, it's VARA USDC. If you want to keep a liquid position, not lock up, earning over 1K percent APY. When you look at that chart compared to Velo, like, I mean, I don't hate that as a, as a move. Uh, but like this, this project as a whole, like I, I haven't done a massive deep dive on it. The reason I want to highlight it is one for some of you yield chasers out there. Um, like to get an extra yield, um, do your own research on this one though. I haven't done like a deep dive into the team or docs and, but like, I think it's extremely important because, um, they've built on a ton of chains, but they black hole a ton of these governance tokens. So like balancer is another one they do B and B. So I'm assuming like wombat, but the point is like the Vara and Mar that's coming off the market or being accumulated by these guys is being black holed. So there isn't a ton of selling pressure coming from these vaults. And this is a large piece of the TVL from the chain. So, I mean, I, I think that's extremely bullish because you're getting way less sell pressure than your average chain. It, it makes me even more bullish that a lot of those rewards aren't just being farmed and dumped on the community. This is one of many. I think I've seen like probably 12 to 15 projects discuss about launching on Kava in the past like 10 days maybe. Um, so there, it's all over Twitter. If you do some research, you can find some net new stuff that pops up. If you guys find anything good, drop it in the comments, drop a cash tag in the comments and I'll try and look through all the Kava projects um, and find some other gems. These were the main ones that stuck out as really the bread and butter and building blocks of the chain. Another like prime example, I don't know this project at all, I haven't done any research, but it popped up and thought I'd show that like if you're really like looking for conviction on why uh, Vara or Amar is gonna be the building blocks of the entire chain, like projects are already airdropping to like their users because those are the people who were here early, um, who are like locking into the, these positions, uh, but like you're getting these airdrops on, on top of some of those insane yields. Seeing projects airdropping to early communities is always awesome to see. Just gives you more free exposure. So I, I think the upside here is pretty endless. Like uh, I'm extremely bullish on Kava. Maybe from a price perspective, we do revisit some of these lows eventually that um, I have marked. But um, I think there's upside in the meantime. And also I think like you can out earn a lot of this with from an APR perspective. Even when you look at like the charts of like Kava versus Bitcoin, Kava versus ETH, like they look pretty healthy to me. Do your own research, like make sure you guys are charting on your own. Everybody has their own systems to use. Like this to me is like a clean, clean bullish divergence. You're just seeing all like, oh, that growth on like very high time frame. So like if you're like, hey, I'm bullish on Bitcoin, I'm bullish on ETH. These charts look bullish on almost, uh, I want to say like against every asset. Um, and then on top of that, you just have some of these insane yields. You're seeing the exposure. There's great narrative. So I really like the ecosystem as a whole. Um, it's finally time, I think, to start diving in and beat the big waves um, as the Kaba airdrops start. So really looking forward to seeing where this one goes. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll do my best to read the comments, drop some of the tickers that you guys are looking at at Kava or elsewhere on other blockchains, and uh, we'll take it from there. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah.